A Place Forbidden, or Why Kids Don't Read Anymore, is an atmospheric horror game where you explore the back rooms, but if the back rooms were a quaint little library and I was constantly phoning you. Now, when I say it's a horror game, I don't mean it's one of those run and hide from the grunt in lest he steal your rations type dealies, nor is it even the kind of horror that builds tension with some grand payoff. No, A Place Forbidden has what I lovingly call hell horror. No, not like agony. What I mean by this is that the game doesn't really contain much in the way of visceral horror, but thematically, and through implication, it provides a bleak and horrifying reality. That reality being that, well, hell exists. Or, you know, close enough. Now, you might not find that concept frightening, but just think about it. There's a monster in the woods! Now that's a scary concept. There are beings beyond our comprehension. Yeah, that's, that's pretty spooky, not gonna lie. There's a yeah, also, you know, ooga booga. But all of these potential realities, while being more immediately concerning, aren't as ultimately horrifying. Yes, eldritch and unimaginable beings are frightening on multiple levels, but most of them won't care about us. In fact, that's most of what cosmic horror is all about. And yes, a murderer and a monster are threatening, but they are feasibly contained, defeated, or escaped from. Hell is kind of different. It has the vastness and omnipotence of cosmic horror, alongside the tailor-made agony of human pain. It's a concept so strong that it has impacted human history more than almost any other concept, and simply the implication of its existence is horror enough for me. Some of you will disagree and look for more active and immediate forms of horror that can be found in most of the other horror games that I've covered, and if that's the case, A Place Forbidden probably isn't for you. Also, if you can't, or otherwise refuse to, read. That... that may be an issue in the library. So let's discuss aesthetics. Pixels! Yep, it's one of those PS1 looking, pixel loving, low poly rendering, retro gubbin, nostalgia poking, sons of guns, which, for the uninitiated, is a pretty big thing in the current horror market. Now usually I'd criticize the game for not necessarily needing to use this aesthetic, but I'm actually very glad that it did. This is because the main setting of the game, the Ouroboros, you Euroboros, ook, Uraburus. The snake library is quite a safe and sterile looking environment. <laughs> and unfortunately, many horror games have a distinct basic unity slash unreal look with oddly shiny white walls and inexplicably smooth textures, but using a pixely style adds a flavorful crunch to everything, while also allowing for a more bespoke set of models for the developer and adding the visual obscurity factor that I mentioned in my last door review. So it may not seem entirely necessary, but it really does add a lot to it. The atmosphere of the game is certainly unique, because it's super dread-inducing while also being strangely... polite? Like, yeah, you must go through the tribulations of a malevolent god, but, you know, keep it down, people are trying to read. But I suppose this is what happens when your antagonist sounds quite scholarly and handsome and cool. Soon you shall be consumed, but first, mayhap some seasoning, a spot of garnish, perhaps. And I must remember to rally the napkins. It's hardly the first game to have a scholarly antagonist, but the setting of an actual library and the themes of forbidden knowledge lend an air of aristocracy to the whole thing, and even though I joke about it, I genuinely loved it. Now, if the game doesn't have monster chases or combat or anything like that, what does it have? Puzzles! Or as I like to call them, stream embarrassment tools. In general, the puzzles are pretty nifty. There was one that wasn't great, and that's by the developer's own evaluation, but the game has received some nice quality of life improvements that make the puzzles more... gooder. The puzzles make up the bulk of the gameplay, and they are ultimately what stops the game from being a walking sim. But while walking sims are looked down upon in many pockets of the horror community, the unique atmosphere and creative setting would set it apart from most of the other PT-style looping hallway games. And if puzzles aren't your thing, and you'd rather be a sort of evil library tourist, you can't just brute force some of them. Though, be aware, the dev may die a little on the inside when that happens. I know more than the others, but I won't tell you. He spent too much time alone thinking, and that accelerated his downfall. A terrible thing... I, I think I just accidentally did it. <laughs> so the story is... Well, I, I don't really want to spoil any of it, and saying too much would automatically spoil most of it, so... I'll try anyway. You, the player, are a thing that is in a place. Stuff happens. End. Thrilling stuff. The reason I'm being protective of the story is because it's good. How good? Well, the writer and main creator of the game works in the narrative department of Obsidian. Yes, that Obsidian. 
this obsidian. And the narrative and setting is what really pulled me in during the demo on the haunted PS1 demo disc. I mean, come on. Forbidden knowledge, scholarly evil, auto-cannibalistic snakes, it's got me like a beetle in an antlion's trap. And by the way, you can go and play the demo, as well as the main game, completely for free over on itch.io. Links are in the description. And the story also does something similar to games like Portal 2 and Dark Souls, where there are two or more concurrent stories playing out at the same time. The one you, the player, are experiencing, and the story of the setting described through notes and other implications. And ultimately, I think this game is on the same level as Lost in Vivo in terms of narrative depth, and something like Penumbra Black Plague in terms of story execution. Which is to say, it's pretty damn good, okay? Overall, the game is great, and I'm running out of ways to say that. It's not super long, but hey, it doesn't have to be. Here is one criticism. You don't get any reward for picking up and subsequently binning all of the discarded paper that's lying around. Also, these stairs are woefully inefficient. And why are the goddamn computer mice on the goddamn ground? So if you like cool settings, deep narratives, subtle horror, meat, stairs, reading, pixels, meat, meat, or improperly positioned computer mice, play this game. The dev is also cool as all hell, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in the game. So yeah, play it. Thanks for watching. Play it. See you next time. Play it. This production was made possible by...